Pep Talks Education. Let us continue with the preliminary examination of a substance and a test. I remember we saw some four areas or some four properties that you need to take note of when you have been given a substance and a test. That is the color of the substance, the smell of the substance, the texture of the substance, and then the delivery scent property of the substance. So let us try to look at those ones, all of them in a simple table. So let us look at our observation. And then we shall also look at what it means. In this case, I'm calling it inference. That means what it probably means. But we are saying that we are not taking the preliminary examination of a substance to be a definite proof of the presence of a particular cation or anion in that substance and a test. Firstly, if your substance is a white solid or possibly if you have prepared the solution and the solution looks to be colorless or a colorless solution then there are some ions that are likely to be present not just one particular ion that is likely to be present but some ions so these ions are I mean the calcium ion, we have magnesium ion, we have zinc ion, we have aluminium ion, we have lead to iron, <clears throat> and we have ammonium iron. So, if a substance is a white solid or its solution which you have prepared by either dissolving the substance, say, in water or by dissolving in an acid, if it is insoluble in water as per the instruction, then if the substance you have been given is a white solid or the solution you have prepared is colorless, then you have to think of these ions here, any one of them or some of them could be present in the substance under test. So that is just one of the observations with respect to color. Let us see this. If I have a blue solid or solution, so if I have been given a solid which is blue in color or it is a solution, it can be this blue, it can be deep blue, it can be light blue, but if it is blue or the solution you have prepared is blue, it can be real blue, it can be light pale blue, then you just know that there might be, there might be copper to iron. You can see what we are doing here. We are looking at firstly colors. And you can see that colors are going with it. Only the cations, the positive ions. Now, supposing you have a green solid or you have been given a green or you are prepared, say, a green solution. Then you just know that there is either copper 2 iron or there is iron 2 iron in that substance under test. Because in this case, I've said that it could be copper 2 iron or iron 2 iron because we have copper 2 salts that are green in color. We also have 
I have two souls which are green in color in this case. Someone may say, but I'm seeing blue here. I'm see also seeing uh, green here. There is copper 2 iron up here with a blue solid dose solution and also copper 2 iron with a green solid dose solution. I want you to know this. Among the souls that we already seen, let me just put them here briefly. Copper 2 sulfate as a salt is blue in color. Copper 2 nitrate also as a salt is blue in color. Even its solution is blue. So these ones here are the blue salts of copper 2 sulfate. So you can see that if I have a blue solid or a blue solution, I may be having copper 2 iron. Then we have got copper 2 chloride. Copper 2 chloride is green in color. And then we have copper 2 carbonate, which is also green in color. And then all the ion 2 salts are green in color. So because of copper 2 chloride being green in color and copper 2 carbonate being green in color, you may not know exactly which one has been given to you, but provided that it is green in color, just know that there is either copper 2 iron or there is iron 2 iron. As I've just said that all the iron 2 salts are green in color. So if your substance provided is a blue solid or if you are prepared the solution and it is blue in color, just know that there might be copper 2 iron. And at ordinary level, we don't have any other cut iron that gives us a blue salt in this case at ordinary level it is only copper 2 iron so take note of that and then if the substance provided is a green solid or the solution of that substance provided is green in color then it can be containing copper 2 iron or can be containing iron 2 iron so as you can see color simply pertains to cation so it is the cation in a given solid that gives it its color, not the anion. So let us continue with more. I think, let me remove this. I was only trying to throw some light here on why copper 2 iron appears with a blue substance and also it appears also when we have a green substance because there are some copper 2 salts which are blue in color and others are green in color. So in this case, it is just like the iron 2 salts. Now, if you have a brown or yellow solid or solution, then in this case, you have iron 3 iron, likely to be present. So, a brown solid or solution or salt which has been provided or a solution of that salt which you are prepared if it is brown or it is yellow remember yellow is what we call pale brown pale brown is what we call yellow so if it is brown or pale brown which is yellow in the color if it is a solid or you are prepared a solution it has that very color then know that it is not containing copper to iron it is likely not to be containing iron to iron not any one of these cations here, but iron 3 iron. So you don't have to forget that. Each color with the cations. Each color of the substance with the cations. So from what we have seen here, just know that in this case, the substance which has been provided for testing, the color pertains to the cations that may be present. So that one is with the color. Color is only for the cations. Then let us see if I have a crystalline solid. That means if I try to test the texture of the substance and it is coarse, not smooth, then that means that <coughs> the particles are large and in this case we say that it is in form of crystals or it is crystalline. So <coughs> that one is likely to be a sulfate because we have got the hydrated sulfates that contains water crystallization 
it is likely to be a nitrate which contains a nitrate ion or it is likely to be a chloride which contains the chloride ion. <clears throat> so, texture pertains to the anions and the anions we have seen are these four, the sulfate ion, nitrate ion, chloride ion and the carbonate ion. But in this case, the carbonates that will be provided with, apart from maybe uh, ammonium carbonate, most of them will not be crystalline in this case. So, if you have got your substance provided being in form of crystals, that it is crystalline, then it is li likely to be containing any one of these anions here. If the substance is a powdery solid, a powdery solid, so remember we are looking at the salts. We are not looking at anything but the salts. So if you have been given a salt which, are, which is powdery, a substance which is powdery, then it is likely to be a carbonate. And it is not, in this case, ammonium carbonate, which is in form of crystals. So the carbonates provided are always powdery. So take note of this. If you have been given a powdery solid, please, then you just know that it is likely to be a carbonate. So you can see that with the texture, these ones here are for, in this case, from here, these ones are for color. Then, these two are for texture. These ones are for texture. Then, let us continue. We also look at, in this case, smell. If you have got the substance with a choking irritating <coughs> smell, a choking irritating smell, you try to waft the substance or the smell of the substance towards your nose and you do this, that means that it has choked you and you respond immediately by reflex action by removing away your eyes as well as removing your nose. In this case, that means you have been choked and the smell of that substance has irritated you. So it is mostly the smell of ammonium salts, mainly ammonium carbonate, which is like that. So if you have got a choking, irritating smell of that substance, that means that it is likely to be having ammonium iron. And it is likely to be an ammonium salt, which in particular is it? ammonium carbonate in this case. So we need to take note of that. Also, so this one is for only smell. This one is only for smell. Then, let us look at the deliquescent property. If the substance is able to turn wet or damp on standing, that is when you leave it for some time and then it becomes wet, or it becomes damp. That means that even if it was in form of crystals, then starts turning into a pest, becomes wet or becomes damp, starts even dissolving. Then that substance is deliquescent because it will be absorbing moisture from the atmosphere or from the surrounding air and then dissolving in that moisture in order to form a solution. So that substance is said to be deliquescent and that's got the deliquescent property. So that substance may be a nitrate which contains the nitrate iron, or it might be a chloride which contains the chloride iron. So most of the nitrates and chloride salts provided are deliquescent, not the sulfate salts or the carbonate salts. It is mostly the nitrate salts or the 
chloride yeah. salts. Let me give you a very simple example of the common salt we use at home, that is sodium chloride. Please try this experiment on your own. Just pick some crystals of the common salt, place them on a surface, say like on a wooden chair, and you leave it, say, outside, standing, let it come into contact with the moist air. In the morning, let it be there overnight. In the morning when you go to find, you will not find the crystals, but you will find just colorless liquid droplets. It is, it is just the case that the crystals will have absorbed moisture from the atmosphere and dissolved in it to form what? A solution. So those crystals will turn into solution. That's what we call deliquescence. So that is because it has got that deliquescent nature or property. So in this case, we have the daily quiescent property or nature of the substance. So this is what we shall be looking at when it comes to preliminary examination. And you may need any one of these. Please take note of the color of the substance. Take note of its texture. Take note of its smell. Take note not of its deliquescent nature and you will find at least any one of these or some of these in that substance which has been provided and then you will also be relating it to the ions that are likely to be present in the substance which has been provided but I say that don't take it as a definite proof or a confirmation of any ion that is present in the substance unless otherwise you heat it or you use reagents to find out the very iron which is there in this case. So this depth of education, thanks for watching.